Alright, what's up guys? Exo Vendetta here. Today I'm bringing you Assassin's Creed Origins review. Uh, first off, I feel like this needed to be done because there's been some harsh words said about it online and some of the reviews that other YouTubers have made I've highly disagreed with, calling it a 7 or otherwise. I just disagree. So I feel like, you know, everyone has a right to their opinion, so why not share mine? So anyways, without further ado guys, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into this review. Okay guys, I highly disagree with how other YouTubers have said that the story was the weakest in the entire franchise. Correction, Origins has kept my interest since the beginning to the very end of the main story. And that is just something to say a lot for the franchise alone. Because I think anyone that compares this to Unity must be ignorant or has not touched this copy of the game at all. Because period, if you haven't played it, then that obviously means you don't know nothing about it. I have heard enough about people comparing this to Unity, and it's enough. This is nothing like Unity. In other Assassin's Creed like that one, the story got very dull, got very boring, and just dried out at, like, just halfway through the game, even before that even. This one, I was entertained throughout the entire story. There was even some emotional parts from when this one little girl drowned from murder by the uh, Order, you know, the people that's, you know, against the Assassin's Creed, uh, the whole point of the game, you know, the Templars. Uh, yeah, and, and then there's even scenes where when he his son did die or he lost the love of his life, Aya, you know, that was really touching. And if you actually watch the scenes or, you know, play the game, you'll feel that emotion or you'll feel like, damn, that's really messed up because you'll see how far Bayek went before the Creed was even made or existed. Like, Bayek went through so much and he had to go through so much just to get justice. And it really shows how the Creed has meaning to it, you know? And learning from Bayek, I honestly have to say he's one of the best characters that I've ever played as in an Assassin's Creed game. It's almost ridiculous how people consider this a weak story. I mean, the character actually has a unique, diverse personality. His characteristics are really of his own. And to be honest with you guys, Bayek is one badass motherfucker and I would disagree with anybody that thinks that this story is very weak or dull because trust me if you want to think of Assassin's Creed that's really weak or dull play Unity and you'll see the huge difference they're nothing alike I find the leveling up in this game way better and a lot more fun compared to the older ways of the franchise. I feel like the older ways of the franchise, it was done so dull and like very, very weak grounded. Like it just, there was nothing to stand on. I mean, leveling up was okay, but there was no technically leveling up. I mean, in the old ones, you just did stuff and ran around. In this, you actually feel like you earned something out of the side quests or main quest. And that's what really counts, I think. The progression system in this game is a lot more fun and addictive. I mean, when you level up, you actually get excited to see what you can actually earn in this. And see, the thing is, you can earn between Warrior, Hunter, or Seer. And uh, you can basically level them all up together, but you can choose which one you want to level up the most if you want to be specific. Uh, Warrior, once you level up all of that tree, uh, you basically just keep leveling up your melee damage. And Hunter, you just level up all your bow damage. It, it keeps continuing so on so on, you get the point. But the leveling up system system is one of the best attributes to Assassin's Creed Origins. By far the largest open world in the AC franchise and undoubtedly the most beautiful. If you don't believe me guys, you can gladly go check out my other two videos of my screenshot galleries of this game. This is the most detailed, most beautiful open world that the Ubisoft studio has ever developed for Assassin's Creed period this game is huge and by far playing this and then Black Flag I've compared them and I feel like the mass of this one is more large even by land or water like this map they really gave a damn guys literally this it's from the same developers obviously that made the Black Flag Assassin's Creed but that being said they really did make this the biggest Assassin's Creed game. 
period. This game was amazing, guys. The open world is so big that I still, even after beating the main story, I have fucking, like, tons of open world I haven't discovered yet. Even regions I haven't visited yet. The open world, if you're looking for a game with long hours of gameplay, interesting world, and just all out a great story and plot, definitely pick up Origins, because the open world will be endless. I guarantee it, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to let you down on this one. AC Origins, got you covered on that open world, baby. There is countless of diverse side quests you can do. For example, the Gladiator Arena. Basically, it says it, it's self-explanatory. You go through the ranks of the arena as a gladiator, fighting other gladiators. You earn respect and XP, of course, and uh, even sometimes weapons. Uh, the cool thing about this game mode or this side quest is um, it feels like its own standalone game mode. It actually does feel like it's its own thing. It's a really fun game mode, and I highly recommend anyone that's playing Origins or planning to pick it up, when you get a good enough level, go to the arena, guys. It helps. You get free XP. It's simply very easy. Once you get to the boss fight, though, it's kind of a challenge depending on who you fight and what level you are, but um, the game is really fun, and uh, if you want to play something outside of the open world and you want something more linear, just do the arena because I'm telling you right now, you will be gladly satisfied. You'll love the challenge, you'll love the heart of it, um, and you'll feel like you're straight out of the movie. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one where he says, are you not entertained? It feels just like that because you get to play in the arena when you win, you hear your name roar and all that. It's like, it's really fun. You just get into the time period of where you're at and it feels so good. So yeah, definitely one of the best side quests I've actually um, done so far. Moving on to the next side quest I want to talk about, there's these little hideout or bases you can take over. And um, if you do leave though, just a, just a quick heads up before I continue, if you leave the base after killing all the bad guys, they do respawn. It's just that it does show your progression there on the map, that you did kill the captain and you did loot the treasure once. And it's kind of like this little side quest that you do, where you go to these military bases or these hideouts, and depending on the size of them, uh, you can actually like kill more commanders or ca uh, captains. Like There may be some where there's one captain and two commanders, or two captains and two commanders that you have to kill and your objective is to kill the uh, main leaders in the uh, camp or hideout and then you have to loot the treasure that's within the base and it's really cool and fun to do on a side activity if you're just passing by on your horse on the open world and you just run by one of these bases, bases I highly recommend you guys go in there and you check it out because uh, it's a really fun side quest it's just a break from the main story and it's something to do in the open world that's kind of cool and I kind of like the idea that you actually kind of like have the enemies respawn so that way it kind of like doesn't die out of the world doesn't get empty and empty more but besides that I really recommend doing this just because of the fact that the infiltration is cool because you can go stealthy or use brute force it doesn't matter just do the main goals and uh, everything should work out for you like for example if you can't find anything or if you don't know where to look use Sinu and he can actually spot the treasure and the main bosses that you have to kill and it's really neat how they made the game work because the system with these side quests is it doesn't matter if it's stealth or brute force as long as you do the quest that's all that matters alright so this is another side quest I want to show you guys it's where you can hunt down these things called flakes and they even have their own little nicknames on the map like if you go here you can see half horn and he's a level uh, 30 <clears throat> 38 and if you go down here there's a level 25 his name is the Iron Man or whatever anyways basically these flakes are like bounty hunters and they're out to kill you in the open world and uh, they're a part of the order that's supposed to destroy the Assassin's Creed it's really dope and anyways uh, you hunt down the flakes while they're hunting down you and if you kill them, you get unique armor or weapons. It's really dope. And uh, basically, it's like a side quest that um, is like... A, it. It's really not much of an objective thing. You just kind of have to hunt down these bounty hunters. 
and some of them will even find you and run into you while you're doing just random other, other random quests. So you really don't even have to try to find them if you don't want to, but they do pop up on the map, and from time to time you'll run into some that are a way higher level than you that will just wreck your shit, so always be careful approaching the Philakes. Not all of them <laughs> are weak, trust me. This one that I'm finding is a 25 while I'm a level 37, so it's kind of a pussy thing to run up on them, but at the end of the day, they give you free gear, and why not? Basically, there you go. You just confirm the kill, and the quest is over. See? Falake's defeated, and it says his name. Okay, now this is one of my most favorite uh, side quests to do in Assassin's Creed Origins. Basically, it's a lot like, you know how Mario Maker kind of has like an online feature where you can see all the X's where people have you know messed up at and like on near automata you can choose to take their xp and stuff or like pray for them or stuff like that you know other players corpses will show up on your map on the open world same thing will happen with this it'll show a blue diamond icon with a black skull in the middle and basically if you approach that uh it'll be a corpse there and uh, just like how the phalanx it showed confirm kill when you approach this corpse, it'll be another player's body, and it'll say, uh, investigate, or whatever, and you'll press triangle, or Y for Xbox, I don't know, but you'll press the button, and it'll, you'll just stand over the character for a few seconds, and it'll say, avenge so-and-so, for example, this guy's name is Weed's Effect, and basically, you're going to avenge him by killing the bad guys that he couldn't kill. It's a really cool feature because basically, let's say I'm in a boss fight and I die. Well, if anyone else is doing that main quest where they're going to fight that boss, they'll see my corpse and they can actually go to my body and investigate my body. And then any XP that, you know, like let's say they do kill the boss I couldn't kill, they'll get the XP that I would have gained on top of the XP they'll gain themselves. So they'll get double XP just for avenging my death and doing the job I didn't finish and I like this because it kind of makes you want to be challenging as a player like okay well I got to do better next time or you know or if this person you know is down and stuff I got to actually take care of you know him and avenge him so I can actually prove I'm better you know it does make you feel like you're better at the game because you know you're in there and you actually do a job that someone else couldn't do and the quest what I like about the quests on here that it shows for avenging another player's uh, death is basically it even shows like the level of difficulty it requires like let's say I'm a level 20 and I just investigated somebody's corpse well, if you go to the options menu and actually go to quests, it'll tell you right there what the level difficulty it is or the level requirements it takes for that uh, one particular mission. And uh, if it's a level 30, well, then I'm just going to have to wait to avenge that guy's death. But it's really cool how it works because it's not a timed thing at all. Basically, once it wants you to avenge that player, you have to kill those enemies. Uh, it's really dope, too, because I like it because, you know, you feel like... If this guy couldn't do it, and I can, you know, that just proves I'm getting better at the game. And two, you know, it, I mean, come on, it's double XP. I mean, you're not going to argue with that in an open world game, whether it be Skyrim, Witcher, or this. I mean, I wish other open world games would have thought of that idea before, too, but I don't know if it was capable. But just saying, that's a really cool feature, and I love to avenge uh, other players online, because it's really neat. Now, you don't get to play with people, but it's just fun, you know? It's fun to realize that, you know, you can actually, you know avenge someone else and do the job they should have done that they didn't finish it's cool anyways guys Honestly, guys, my final verdict for this game is a solid, made out of solid stone, a solid 9. Very easily, because of the fact that the only reason I didn't put it at a 10 was because of the bugs, and that would be once in a blue moon. Nor were they game-breaking or anything like that. The bugs weren't even that big of a deal, but they do need to be said, of course. Um, but with any game, whether it be Witcher, Skyrim, of course open world games are going to have some of their flaws or bugs and with this one they were very just wacky or random at times it wasn't even that big of a deal and I didn't even get offended or angry about them um, another reason I think I gave it a 9 instead of a 10 because I know what you're thinking why not just make it a 10 uh, it, it's also because of the fact that 
this is just a start for the right direction for the franchise. So I'm not just going to give it a full 100%, you know. I do just want to give it a 9 just because this was the very first Assassin's Creed that I've actually appreciated in a very long time. You know, playing Black Flag, playing this, playing the Ezio Trilogy, playing Unity, playing all these other ones. I feel like this game is not even Assassin's Creed anymore. I feel like the direction they're going with this franchise is blissful and beautiful. And honestly, if you want my honest opinion, should you buy it? Hell no, you should rent it first. It's only like $5 or less to rent it for a day or two. Give it 24 hours of your time and definitely try it out. Like I said in the beginning of the video, everyone has their own opinion and different tastes in gaming. So I'm not here to tell you to buy it and tell you that it's a 9 for you. I'm telling it's a 9 for me. That's all I'm telling you. And if you guys really want to try and give it a shot instead of judging it before you play it, definitely pick it up. It's worth it, 100%. And once you try it, then you can fully judge. Because if you didn't play it and you're just saying you don't like it or it's trash, that's a statement, not an opinion, and there's a huge difference. Alright guys, well if you didn't like my uh, opinion of this game, that sounds like a personal problem. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe, leave a like. As always, XO, out.